today, by request, I'm going to do some uh, really good basic guitar stuff. I'm going to show you um, how my personal guitar rig works, uh, what I do to get my sound, and um, everything. I'm going to show you how to tune. Um, I'm going to show you my settings and uh, what I use my different effects um, for. Uh, you know, why I have a particular amp, how I set it, everything. So you, you basically can get started and, uh, you know, maybe you're not an electric guy um, or, you, you know, you've never really plugged in. You've just been like, you know, playing, but not really, you know, electrified, you know, you don't have cables or, or, or effects or, or you keep your amp, you know, somewhere in the closet or something. Well, this is how I get my sounds. Um, Basically, what I like to do is I use a uh, Marshall. Marshall is um, it's a good way to get a, a classic rock sound, and um, you got to get the tube stuff. You can't get the cheap, cheap, cheap stuff, which is like the MG series, anything that's like uh, solid state or uh, hybrid. Uh, it has to have uh, tubes. What do you call it? Uh, valves, as they say in England which is a uh, kind of an archaic, uh, an antique type of uh, um, technology. But uh, the vacuum tubes give you that sort of distortion, that uh, overdrive that, you know, you hear the like, Kiss albums and uh, ACDC albums and Led Zeppelin and all those countless albums. All those bands where you see the Marshall stacks behind them, the Marshall Marshall, that's what they're doing. They're taking a tube out and they're um, taking their signal boosting it really loud so that those tubes are kind of like pushed it to the limit. It almost sounds like they're ready to explode, but like just a little bit, not too much, you know. And then, you know, it's the amount of, uh, amount of gain you put on there. You don't want too much, um, you don't want too little. So, we'll uh, talk about how I uh, achieve my sound, this and that. Okay, first thing, always loop your your cord through there, okay? So your cord should not just go straight down into the amp, it should go in through here, and then into your amp. So no matter what happens, if you step on it, it's not gonna pull out, okay? It's like locked in there. And this little nut in here won't wiggle back and forth, wiggle back and forth all the time, which loosens the nut, and eventually you lose the signal of the guitar right in the middle of the show like a jackass so do this like every single person in the music industry does and you'll be good okay all right it's a standard basically a standard thing you know like everybody does it um i have a uh, pretty nice strobe tuner um the strobe tuners are kind of like you know a little bit ultra sensitive and stuff my pedal board here the tuner the um the stroke tuners are kind of like these super, super sensitive tuners that um, they never really, you know, a regular tuner is like red light for too low, red light for too high, and then green in the middle when you got the right note. This one, it never really locks on the right note because just plucking it shows, you know, the vibrations, it gets further away and then closer. So it's, it's so sensitive that it's kind of like you don't want the needle really going up or really going down you want it to be kind of moving like a right around the note so in other words it almost never stands so it's that sensitive you're just touching it you could feel you know the vibrations of the needle you can see it so um it's a it's a good way to tune but in the same time at the same time it's a little bit annoying because you know you sit here trying to get it perfect 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 to let it want it never really just locks on green. I got it. Let's move on. So, all right. So I tend to. I like to tune with my uh, guitar muted. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the, gu the guitar when I tune, so you guys don't got to. You don't have to hear it and stuff. Okay. What I generally do is I also stretch my strings, so I give them good pulls. What's gonna happen is they're gonna they're gonna slack off anyway. They're gonna stretch. So if they went a little sharp, 
when you had it on the stand or in the case, you do this, it gets rid of all that slack. You just do it. Then tune, always tune up to a note, if you can, and tune down to a note. Gotta take a shot of the stroke tuner for you guys to see it. Okay, what I generally do is I'll get myself 12th fret harmonic on the E. It's a little more stable and easier to tune than just an open E. But you can do that too. Okay, the next string in A, I just hit that harmonic on the 12th fret. Right over the fret, not in the space, right over the metal fret. Sometimes just that stretching knocks the strings into perfect tune. This particular guitar doesn't need a lot of tuning when it's taken off the stand. If I do crazy things with the whammy bar at the end of a, a video, then it might be a little bit knocked out. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you can see most of the strings are actually in. All right, so I've got the 40 watt Marshall tube in. It's 40 watts. I never bring this thing past about one. Um, yeah, it's on one, exactly one. Okay, what I do is I use boost pedals. I have two different boosts. One of them gives me a basic, like, thickens my sound and gives me a little bit of that ACDC kind of grind. And the second one gives me a little top end. It boosts me more, but it also gives me a little bit of like a jangly quality, which I like. That would be my destination bump boost by option five. They're really cheap. Um, if you want to buy cheap gear, go to reverb, reverb.com. Um, I buy a lot of these pedals used. The other boost I have is by somebody who's kind of like a really nasty dude, so I don't want to uh, promote him. But um, it's a standard, like a, you know, what they call a clean boost, but it's a lot of decibels, 27 or something. So I keep that about halfway up, 13 decibel boost. So let's hear how this is without the boost. stretching my string, it's a little sharp. I need it to stretch. Okay, let's turn on the, 120, uh, the 13 decimals worth of boost by the uh, Nazi guy. without the boost. Okay. What I generally like to start with is a clean sound that's got a little bit of dirt on it. So I work the gain, you've got gain and volume, I work the gain so you can barely hear distortion when you're digging into it. is going to get you good overdrive. Mid-range is on about two. Got my bass cranked, presence cranked, resonance cranked, cranked. Resonance is like super lows, super bass, and presence is like super highs. Yeah. 
I thought that was my bass contour. Where? It's up here. All right. Let's turn on that second boost now. Wow, this is sustained. But it also kicks my reverb pedal and my delay pedal into overdrive. It makes them sort of go higher too, because they are not through the effects loop. A lot of times they pretty much suggest putting your reverb and your delay or any time-based effects through the effects loop of the amp in the back. But uh, I don't like the way it sounds. It sounds, everything sounds all compressed when I do that, so I just don't do that. So the downside is that I have to just adjust my levels and my reverb and delay, that's it. Sometimes you hear my, my sound go That's that when I hit that equal. Okay, so it's pretty clean now. I pretty much have my two boosts on it. So um, what I like about the boosts, instead of using the overdrive on this amp, if you notice, this amp has tons of overdrive in it. So why use boost pedals, people say, right? Um, it's not to make my leads louder when I do solos. It improves the tone. So basically, when I slam this amp with a lot of signal, I make this guitar as loud as I can. That's what you call boosting the amp. Some people do that with other pedals, like tube screamers and stuff. Instead of using it as an overdrive, using the overdrive, you know, sort of the chips that, you know, the sound in the pedal, they just turn the volume way up and the distortion part down, the overdrive down. That's what Stevie Ray Vaughan used to do, use it as a boost pedal. So you turn it way up, and what it does is it slams your hand with tons of volume, so much volume, that it sounds like distortion, but it's distortion happening in the amp, not in the pedal. So in the long run, your tone sounds like your guitar and your amp overdriving, not like your pedal sound. So that's the advantage of using boosts. Um, long story short, things sound less compressed. They're more open. So I have more touch sensitivity. You can hear the dynamics of my playing. You know, it sounds like I'm struggling more to get the notes out, you know, kind of, it's hard to explain. But, but uh, like heavy metal, uh, people who shred, it's very uh, compressed. So everything's coming out at the same level. It's uh, all like one one volume but uh, when you use boost pedals it's a more open sounding kind of uh, clipping and it's um, more dynamic so you can hear the quiets and uh, the quiets are clean like this listen but then when you dig into it Okay. And we're 
ambulance. Okay, there's an ambulance too. We have this one special kind of ambulance called a hot solar, which is super noisy. It has like eight sirens at once. They're like yellow and stuff. All right. Um, my settings. Okay, I keep my gain, which is the distortion knob, on two. I keep my volume on one. Okay. I'm using the green green channel, which is the uh, the classic rock channel, not the, the metal scoop channel. I use that, the classic gain, not the ultra gain, uh, on my DSL-40C, dual super lead Marshall amp, um, cheesily made in Indonesia. It's an okay Marshall. It's the real deal, I guess. You know, it performs like a Marshall, but it's not my ultimate Marshall. Um, I used to play with something a little half stack thing. It was a 50 watt Plexi, uh, a 1984 X, I believe was the model. But uh, it was one, one of the very first uh, Plexi reissues. And um, what I would just do is go straight into that amp with none of this stuff down there. All I'd use was uh, a tuner and a, uh, and a wah wah because it sounded so great. But uh, in hindsight, I'd probably just use a boost pedal now, maybe. Um, you know, something's happening out there. Another guy, you can see him way down the block coming down. So yeah, it's gonna get worse. All right, I will continue my monotone lecture. Ah, uh, get out of his way. This one's an SUV, it looks like a fire chief, this guy. Yeah, yeah, nobody's in your way. Uh, these two guys are actually. Right by Forest Hills Bay. You got it, just go. Go. Turn off your siren. Alright, alright, alright. Anyway. Um, Stall and I'm waiting for this guy to move. Anyway. Maybe I'll edit all this out, maybe not. Okay. Um, my settings, okay, I keep the gain pretty low here. You can turn the distortion up to your desired point and get this same effect without any of these pedals, but this is kind of a cheap Marshall. To me, it sounds like caca. When I got it, I was highly, highly disappointed with it because I was just coming off with some other Marshall, which was great, this vintage half stack, you know, which was great. It was like a, um, a really nice basket weave greenback ca uh, cabinet with a, uh, you know, excellent, you, you could see in my uh, my old, uh, what did Kevin do before JJ had sent the video, there's some pictures of me, the little Marshall in the background behind me. Gorgeous plexi rig I have. And after using that, this rig was a real disappointment. It's a Marshall, but it's like, it's... It sounds like cock to me. Boosting it gets you a better tone. You could try the distortion on your amp. You could also try just boosting it, and you could try combinations of the two. What generally works for a lot of people is that you get the amp just barely dirty. They call it the edge of breakup, and then boost the heck out of it with a pedal. So that's the, the classic way to do it. You'll see a lot of the pedal shows and stuff telling you to do that. Okay. Now, um, Tuning it is, is pretty, I think, self-explanatory. I like to tune with harmonics and, and an electric tune. Um, I tune to E. I don't really, you know, the only time I might tune to E flat is if I'm playing uh, a Jimi Hendrix song that's, you know, he tuned that way, so I have to copy it, you know. Um, which was it? Six was nine? One of those songs he he's in that t that tuning, I think. That one, right? Thank you. 
Yeah, that's an easy one if you want to learn it, actually. So you just take like this. You take the F chord, right? You guys know how to play an F chord, which is borrow the first two, and then go up and then up. So that's basically like an E chord moved up. And cover these two. Okay, so if you do the E, and then you just, I mean, if you do an F, open F chord, and then you just put the pinky down, that's the Hendrix thing. Okay, but I think he started one fret down. So when you go one fret down, you have to leave this finger off. You don't use it, so it's... So you go open to F sharp. So then we just learned up one. So it's open into A, fifth fret. So second fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. Open, second fret, second fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. really hard, right? It's not that hard though, right? It's just an F chord with the pinky down. And we'll move it up. And then two down. And then back up two. And then up three more. And then two more. And then two down. Three down. Two down. Start with there, all right, and we'll move on. Okay, 
Let me show you a little bit about some of my, my uh, techniques and my pedals and stuff. Okay, generally, like everybody else, when I'm playing rock, I go to this pick up here, and that's going to be my more aggressive sounds. <laughs> something a little jazzier or um, whatever, smoother, funkier, spacier, I'll get out of that position. It's too brash, you know, it's just very, very harsh. So I'll go to a different pickup selector. When I'm playing this pickup here, or both, so it's more. control your volume. So um, what I like to do is I get myself to a heavy distorted level up and then I ride my volume, which is a very old school kind of like dinosaur guy thing to do, but I think a lot of people just do that. That's what Hendrix did. He used a fuzz face, dimed the fuzz all the way to the top, and turned his volume dial down on his guitar, and that gave him a glassy kind of beautiful sound, but it only works with a fuzz face. It doesn't work with most other fuzz pedals. Works a little bit with a tone bender because this, the uh, circuits are simu similar, but it's a fuzz face thing. So, um, ride the volume dial. Get the amount of distortion perfect though, exactly where you want it. Like if you're playing some blues, you might want to start off with an aggressive lick like this. Like on. Then you sweeten it up, change pickups. Keep it sweet now. when you feel you want to. But if you want to dig into it, play a little rock, slap it into that treble pickup. So it's good when you're on the edge of breakup, it sounds more aggressive because you know, they can tell it takes a little energy to get it to distort. distortion up, it'll give me a little different effect. And I'm palm muting my right hand here. wet reverb on all the time. And then I put a tiny, tiny bit of delay, the smallest amount, you could hear it. Put a little bit of feedback, a little bit more delays.
Okay. Uh, if I want to get some other tones, sometimes what I'll do is I'll use my wah and I'll just keep it on. Um, that will get me some other stuff too, especially when I'm soloing. Um, but it does kind of take the bottom out of everything. So if I'm playing, if I hit the wah, all that the bass is gone from the signal kind of. But it does give you a lot of other tones. You can pick any one of these tones. And some of them are really strange. And sometimes I'll use the wand just to accent things. so much wow wow but it's almost like you know I'm hitting it like a, a sustain pedal and it does affect the sustain too the wah wah does give you more sustain in a way like when you conquer back and it gives you a strange kind of a zap of tone too kick on for spacey stuff. It's the Fathom reverb. So that's a heavy reverb and it's got other things mixed in with it too. Um, I could put some uh, modulation on it, some wow and flutter effects. Downstairs, I have kind of a super pedal waiting for me, the Grand Canyon uh, delay, which is going to do a new thing and a very, very advanced delay things. And I'll be able to trigger strings and bass and uh, layer different songs with the looper. It's, it's pretty incredible. So I'm going to be going next level. Uh, definitely. Uh, 
The Phase Shifter, this is my Grand Orbiter by Earthquaker Devices. It's a phase shift. It's also a vibrato pedal if you want it to be. It sounds a little bit like a univibe too. Um, This is my M5 modeling uh, box. This is by Lemon 6. This one I use a lot for my um, my looping and I use it for reverse echo. It's um, one of the only effects that I know that does true reverse. Um, basically, whatever you play, it'll play it backwards for you, which is extraordinary to me. Um, it hears it, records it, plays it back pretty much in real time, you know. Let's check it out, okay? Let's do a scale. Sometimes this is something that I've kind of done, but I don't think a lot of other people bother doing it. But it's like the Kevin thing. Um, I turn the feedback way up, so it's reverse um, doing the reverse delays, but infinitely. So um, I'll play that scale again. <laughs> Use a little bit more exotic scales, it tends to be more fun. Diminished. Mm 
Tuning up to the note, going below the note, and tuning up to it, stretching it to. These strings are a little shot. I have a tendency to play my strings like crazy. My strings will be new one day and then old the next day. My problem is that I don't I don't switch strings, I switch guitars. So when the strings get worn out, I just switch to a different guitar. <laughs> As your strings get older, get older, they're going to be harder to hold the tune. down here are um, sort of weird. Uh, this is the Bicycle Delay by Catlin Bread, which is uh, barely a delay pedal. It's really not delay. It's something totally different that they made up that I've never seen any other company make. <laughs> ways. They could go up, they could go down, you could the time. This takes me a little bit step further, a little bit more gain, but it's natural sounding.
work with my fingers too. It's going to give you different tones. switch, get a t heavy time now. Sometimes it's good to ride down there, like a down the steps thing, kind of like down. Like. Yeah, I notice Hendrix does that. Kind of like toppling down the stairs, like. 
Je pinch, pinch euh, en main, ok. Mm. Choking up on the pick, really close. Hitting it with the skin of the fingers and the pick at the same time, you can start getting some of those pick harmonics in there. To get your Billy Gibbons on. So it's exactly 12 frets above there, so then every note you have to move the right hand to, to keep it 12 frets above to get the pinch on there. That's for that octave, you know. a good one then I might stay there.
you about my set. It's like a twenty dollar pedal. It sounds pretty darn good too. <coughs> this is their um, chorus pedal. I said chorus. Okay. I've got a fuzz pedal here too, but the fuzz pedal is probably gonna go because I have a new fuzz face coming from Big Knob Pedals. From uh, Gary at Big Knob Pedals was nice enough to send me out a brand new. Um, well, it was nice enough because I, I bought it, but. Uh, I sold uh, two guitar cases, and I got the Grand Canyon, and um, what did I sell to get that? Yeah, I've been trading a whole bunch of old gear to get new pedals, it's been pretty fun. Cases, I've been selling cases, so I had like 10 cases, hard cases in my uh, closet for like a decade, since before my son was born, and I never use them, I use gig bags anyway, so I saved a couple, I saved one Fender style, and I saved the two Gibson cases, and that's it. The rest just gift bags. This M5 is like 80 bucks used, and it's pretty much got every single effect you want, um, and they're all good, pretty much, like, all good. You just toggle through them, each one's great. Bias, tremolo, listen to that. Bias, tremolo. set the speed for. Thank you. 
the weirdest thing. The M5 pedal phaser, I don't need that though. But it's nice. Oh, it's nice. Or biphase, so that's like a neutron biphase. Kind of a rare vintage effect. Kind of a rare vintage effect. That's like a who is that lady? Who is that lady? He's got a biphase and some fuzz on it. chorus right there. Okay, 
sixth string, fourth fret. Fourth fret, slide up to the sixth fret. Okay, this finger is hanging free, stick it on the next string. pinkies on. That's the note you're going for. But you want to cover that and the note behind, below it. And you want to go up to this note. So it's fourth string, third and the fourth string. Third and fourth string in the sixth fret. Okay, with the ring finger, two frets up right there. So hit both of these notes and then hammer it on. Before you heard me going. to go up here, but instead of you going one higher. 